Martel and Cranium, not the usual references for gospel singers. But John Mark, perhaps not the usual gospel singer. His catchy crossovers targeted at a wider audience. Yeah. Gospel music in Jamaica. It's growing, it's thriving. I believe that a breath of fresh air is, 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 is in it right now. There's some new sounds, new people. John Mark amongst them. How far do you go? Because I think the ladies like a couple of you, sir. <laughs> You're making that connection. Definitely, I realized that that is happening. I didn't shy away from it. And let me use the gifting, let me use the sound and capture them where they are. Let them hear it in their own tongue, in their own ear, the way they're listening to it right now. I present it to them. I know, I know, I know the Holy Spirit that speak to you, you know. I mean, it could be the Holy Spirit, you know, but it could just be your voice. No, some of us. John Mark with a playful exchange on his track, Feel Good, almost flirtatious, but staying within the bounds. An engaging moment, more in tune with a younger demographic and the songs they might also be listening to than with regular praise music. Are you getting pushback from other people in the gospel business because of your frank engagement with your female audience? I don't think so, you know. I don't think so at all. If so, I haven't been hearing it much. They've been kind of quiet about it. But I believe that for those who have listened, the lyrics were not compromised. The integrity of the lyrics were potent enough and coined in a way that the listener should get what they should get from it. The sound, though, I had to meet you where you are. I have to meet you where you are with the dancehall sound, as raunchy as it needs to be. I met them where they are with it. Like others of his generation, John Mark earlier taking cues from the dancehall mainstream, impressed with the style, if not substance, of the lyrical content. There's only two particular persons uh, just before um, I transitioned into gospel music in an immense way. The two sounds that I was hearing with selling sex heavily was the sounds of Dexter Daps and Cranium. And I was drawn to it. I stayed away from it. I didn't feel mature enough to approach the music at all, being a young Christian. But after years and understanding where I am and feeling the integrity of the music and the sound and what I need to be said, I realized what was captivating. They're excellent. They make sure it sound good. And a lot of these ladies aren't hearing gospel. They aren't it. The moment they hear it, they say, oh, that's church music. I listen to it Sunday. No, I needed to listen to this Monday. The point is, it's a fine line. How far do you go? As far as I need to, as far as the Lord allows me to. As long as it's within a safe confinement. Yeah. Being relevant to the time and to the sound, people will hear what they need to hear from the message of the music. Without the relevance, they just put it aside as a church concert, put it aside as a, as a gospel thing and not a sound that's standing on its own, being heard. So if you're only able to classify it as a church thing, it's not being as effective as it should be. You don't feel nothing yet. Seems like the world you've tasted. So is there scope for the Christian community to grow in Jamaica because people seem to be moving away from the church in droves? There is scope and I think it, it takes for those who, who need to be real enough to understand where they need to go. As I said, if they only feel like it's something to be heard on Sunday and Saturday, that's exactly where it will stay, Sunday and Saturday. How old are you? 27. And you got into gospel how? How? You're I, always drawn to Jesus? I grew up in church, you know, but I wasn't always drawn to Jesus. I didn't want no part of him because it sounded like I needed to give up what would seem like the pleasurable life. So I didn't want any part of it, you know, until I was about age 18. So you led the pleasurable life? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I was dancing in it, man. I really wanted the worst of it, you know. In fact, I really had a desire to be a bad man at one point. I don't know why that was so intriguing. Because I grew up on Vibes Cartel music, and it was my first lyrical inspiration. I just believe he's, he's the teacher for true. You understand? And so those being my early influences, I know the type of lifestyle that I wanted to lead and really enjoy, you know? But God have better plans, you know? And him shake me up. By the way, what me. did you like about Cartel when you were listening to Cartel? The intricacy, his understanding of what he wanted to talk about. He didn't just mention it. 
he knew the culture and the custom of what he was going to put into the lyrics. And so having studied that, every time he says something, it hit you right where it's supposed to. And I was like, this man vivid, him and him articulate. He's precise. He understands what he's saying. And him coined it well. It's gospel addressing the real issues that people want addressed in Jamaica. Not enough. The crime, the politics. Not enough. I believe there are some. There's a generation that has risen up to speak the truth. And so your generation is a little bit more real? A little bit more. I think they're as real as we need to be because guess what? I realize without being real, you cannot be heard in this generation. They're away with the facade, you know? They want the real questions answered. And they're clearing the smoke. And when the lights are down, they want to know what's really happening in the background. When you say really how it go, is it true? Are you truly convicted by what you're singing? You know, and can I live by it truly, by watching you as an example? And I believe that a generation is here to do it. So what sort of pitch would you make to youngsters? Tell them something they mightn't have gleaned from your music. Your body. The temple of God, you don't view it that way. But guess what? It is the very thing you use to enjoy this life. And everything that you're enjoying in a sinful way, trust me, this very body will reject it shortly. You know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm uninterested in sex this way anymore. What do I do? You realize pleasure outgrows pleasure. And then you need to dig too deep to find more pleasure. Find solace in Christ Jesus. Trust me, if you try God, trust me, you'll find you. Stop trying to find yourself. There's no finding yourself outside of the person who made you. Find the manufacturer, you'll know what to do with the product. You fall by the wayside every now and again. My eyes are fixed on Jesus. I know the price, so the temptation is really a waste of time. Starve temptation and finish the course. What's set before me is important and it's But be big. honest though, you're a young man, you're drawn in a particular direction. When that temptation comes along, what do you do? Think of God? No man, you find your friend them and go build with. Go play some domino, do some fun things. You see, the idea of God, if you only fixate it to the space of church, that's what you'll get from it. It needs to transcend. It needs to go in your workspace. It needs to go in your recreational life. If it doesn't transcend, you haven't truly met Christ because He exists in all the faculties and every aspect of your life. If it only happens Sunday and Saturday morning, you don't find it yet. For me. That's gospel according to John Mark. Giving praise, but casting a wider net. No apologies, you, you, you think you're doing nothing wrong and it's fine and you're staying within the boundaries. Definitely, it's nothing wrong. Everything about it is right because I pursue excellence. If it's not good, then it's bad <laughs> and it's good.